All right, everybody. Welcome back to Ask a Dev. We are doing an unannounced live stream where what we are going to be doing is we're going to be doing this as an addendum to our VFX uh, projectile and VFX stream that we did earlier today. You didn't think we were just going to let that lie. Uh, there's a couple things that we were doing in that stream that I wanted to kind of go back over to clarify. Uh, and generally, I'd like to kind of put a bow on that. Uh, the projectile that we were making so that hopefully it will be a much more succinct and usable uh, blueprint for you all to work with. So I thought I would go ahead and just do that as a live stream. And I will go ahead and put the link up in the uh, in either one of the cards or at the end of the stream, etc. So you can find the original uh, projectile and VFX stream if you're looking for it. My name's Kevin. Uh, like I said, this is an add on. We do uh, live blueprint tutorials each week and we are going to go ahead and hop right back in to where we were earlier today. So first we need some Unreal and let's go ahead and double check and make sure our chats are up. I'm not expecting anybody. It's pretty late tonight. So we things should be quiet. We're not in a rush anymore. So let's just talk about a couple of the things that were going on as we were working earlier today. So uh, we had, we kind of ended where our projectiles were spinning around, they had colors, etc. But I wanted to address a few things. First, let's talk about what was happening with our cannon. Originally, when we started the last tutorial, uh, we made a mistake. And by we, I mean I. Uh, in my excitement, I, I think I was so excited about the tutorial itself combined with uh, a time crunch just with work stuff. I was trying to rush through. But if you recall, I had put after this a multiply because I, what I was going to do was I was going to take the delta and I was just going to use that to increase our Z rotation. Super simple. The multiply was in the wrong place. If you look at what's happening in here is we're taking our delta on tick, which is, you know, 0.0, 1.3, .0, whatever it is. We're adding it to the current rotation. Let's just say starts at zero and we multiply it by five. So the first time through this loop, we have 0.05, then we have 0.25, then we have point, uh, the mass starts to get messed up. But by the time you get to five degrees, the next time you come through here, you're taking five degrees, adding 0.01 to it and multiplying by five. So it becomes 25. Then 25 becomes 125. Ragu, uh, Argawal. Hey, how's it going? How are you doing tonight? Welcome to the stream. So basically this multiplication, we were multi multiplying our entire rotation by an additional five. We just simply put this in the wrong place. We needed to multiply the tick rate by five and add that to our current rotation. And if we do that, we should see a much more reasonable turn speed on this guy. Now, it's still a little bit slow. We could multiply probably by 100 now. And the interesting thing is we'll probably get a much more reasonable turn speed on our cannon. So overall, that was a uh, just one of those things. I think I may go 70 on this. That was just a placement thing, all right? Now, the other thing that uh, I'd wanted to revisit was kind of some of the setup in our projectile. Whoa, in our projectile. We uh, didn't get a chance to clean a lot of this up. So if you recall, thank you Argawal. Did you have a chance to catch the original video? Cause this is actually an addendum to our VFX and um, projectile from earlier today. Just catching up now that we have some time to breathe to go ahead and do this, but we didn't get a chance to do any of the comments or make any of this stuff just clean. So let's just make some room here. And I also want to address, we're going because we're going to be working on this a little bit to, to add to this, especially with the targeting. So let's put a comment in here and this is going to be our homing projectile. And if you recall when we were first doing the lob and we were calculating our position and everything, we had the start position correct, but uh, vector math had us beat for a little while there. 
and I was mistaken in what I was passing in. I actually think that it's worth trying to make sure that we understand this well enough. I don't know that we needed our initial project, uh, projectile velocity. I think what we could do is we could get a reference to self like we had originally planned on. If we get a reference to ourself and we get our actor, look, uh, our actor rotation like we'd done originally and we get the X vector on this, I think we can connect that in. Let's just see. Rabbit hole of checking the channel. Well, thanks for checking out the stream. It's awesome to have you. So if you'll notice that little change, it had nothing, our, our problem had nothing to do with the fact that our, um, which way our cannon was facing, okay? We have, these lobs are now working and just to double check that they are in fact working, let's go ahead and take our cannon and let's remove the randomness and let's only do lobs instead of straight shots. So we have straight shots, we have lobs, and we have homing missiles. Okay, so let's just make sure every lob is shooting out as a lob. That's, that's what we should have been able to get to in one easy step. But again, in my excitement to show you all how this was working, the lob itself, hold on. The lob itself um, wasn't quite right. So this initial projectile velocity that we packed, passed in, if we find references to it, we are using this here as well. Um, and I don't, I don't actually think we need that there either. So we could effectively simplify this because when we spawn our particle, our particle, or not our particle, excuse me, our projectile, our projectile is already spawning with the rotation in mind. So I believe if we want to, we should be able to do this this way as well. Now what I wanna do is double check. This is going to be for a straight shot. So let's test that and make sure we're good. So let's take our straight shot, compile that and run it. So our straight shots also work correctly now, which allows us to simplify this a lot. So what that means is uh, this is cleaned up now. We can go ahead and compile and save this. And then we can go back to, actually we can go back to our projectile base. Double check that we have no references. I love doing this. Go ahead and right click on this and find references. Nothing is found. We don't need this variable. Yikes, uh, just delete it. So that variable is gone. If we compile this and go back to our cannon, you'll notice we have this bright red now. If we refresh this node, this will just get disconnected. We don't even need that. Okay, so we have, we now have our projectile shotter. Let's clean that up too. Let's make that projectile shooter. We were moving so fast this after, or this morning when we did this. Okay, so not a so hooter, we have a shooter. So we have our projectile shooter now. So that's named nicely. Um, and you'll notice this turned red. If we right click and just refresh the node, we'll have to connect that back in. We may not even need this, we're gonna double check. All right, so we're spawning our projectile, that looks great. Okay, so that kind of cleans that up. So now we have, uh, in our comments, we have the lob, we have the straight shot, and we have the homie missile. So let's make some room for all this stuff. What we're going to do is we're actually going to uh, finish off a couple of the other thoughts that I had while we were doing this. Things that I wanted to show you all. Okay, so that's gonna be our velocity vector. Let's just bring this inside here, just so that it's nice and clean. Sure, we'll stack these, why not? Okay. I am doing my unit or work while enjoying your stream of you doing Unreal work. That's awesome. Well, like I said, thanks for hopping in the stream. Uh, so uh, we had somebody hop in the stream earlier today saying they, they knew that they used to work in Unity 
Yeah, hopefully they didn't need to explain why they were joining an Unreal tutorial stream, which I thought was hilarious uh, based on recent events. Okay, so that cleans that up. So we have homing, we have lob, and we have our straight shot. Now, what we want to do is, let's just double check. This is our missile trail, that's fine. I do, I, what I want to do is I want to change the color as something that we can pass in. So let's add a new variable. And this is going to be our, um, we could call it color, let's call it BFX color just to be clear. Color, mm. yeah, let's call it BFX color. I think that'll be clear. And we're going to make this a linear color. Uh, not a curve linear color, linear color. Okay, and we'll make it instance editable and we'll expose it on spawn. And then let's compile that. And I do want to set our defaults. I want to make sure that our alpha on the default is at least one. And the reason being is uh, if we if we mess that up, it, then what ends up happening is our, our color is, our, our projectile won't even be visible. And I'm also going to just make it white. I think that'll be a good default color for this. And then rather than using this making of the linear color, let's just feed in our VFX color. So what this is going to do is this is going to change the trail color to be whatever we say it should be when it spawns. And then also we're going to do the same thing down here when we spawn our particle explosion. And what we want to do is just feed that in here. We can get rid of this and that will help us when we create our different cannons. So what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate our cannon and we're gonna have one cannon that shoots lobs, one that shoots straight shots, and one that shoots uh, homing missiles. And we're gonna change all of the colors and everything. So it'll be like, it'll be a good example for you to potentially use as, for example, if you're firing the weapons from different guns and stuff like that. Okay, so that's going to change our color. If we compile and save this, we can go back to our, uh, Canon now we're going to need uh, we don't even need to refresh it you can see our color comes in now let's do this um, I for testing I've been using random random um, what do you call them velocity profiles straight lob etc but really what we want to do is we want to be able to specify based on the blueprint so I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna promote this to a variable, this projectile velocity profile. And I'm also going to promote my VFX color to a variable. And what this is going to do is it's going to make it so that when I drag a, an instance into our level, for example, here, what I can now do is I can now go down and find, did I compile that? I did, I compiled that. Let's delete that, go to our blueprints, and let's just drag a cannon into our level. Now this cannon, uh, did I not set the expose on spawn? I probably did not. Nope, instance editable and expose on spawn. Same thing for the velocity type. Okay, so here's what we got. Now, for this cannon, we are going to make our straight projectiles green, really bright green. Let's go like a thousand green, not a hundred, a thousand, super green. Okay, now, just with that change alone, this cannon should only shoot uh, straight projectiles and they're going to be green both the vfx and the trail now what's interesting is you'll notice that it's arcing downward the reason it's arcing downward is remember we need to specify for the straights that we don't want to use gravity so let's also you know i'm i'm wondering if we even want the gravity scale to be a variable here because I think we do, I think we do, but you can see what I'm saying, generally speaking for a straight projectile, let's just, 
ignore gravity scale. We'll keep gravity scale, but it just won't be used. And what we can do here is for our straight projectile path, just like we did down here for homing, we can take our projectile movement and override gravity. So let's just do that. That should be pretty clean. So let's get our projectile movement and let's uh, set our gravity scale. Set the projectile gravity scale and I am going to come into here. I'm going to set it to zero. Okay. Compile and save. Go ahead and run that. So now our straight shots are straight shots. All right. Now let's change this turret to be a lob. And we should be getting green lobs now. There we go. We have green lobs. That's perfect. And then finally, let's just test our homing missiles. Again, they should just be, they should just work. So here's our, uh, not straight, we're going homing missiles. Okay. Now, uh, you can see as I run, these missiles are trying to curve to get me. If they hit a wall or something, they, they eventually won't. But they do a pretty good job of catching me, and they're green. So now we have the ability to create different cannons. What I'm going to do in that vein or is just to show you that working, let's just duplicate this cannon. I did that by alt dragging and it automatically duplicated it for me. This cannon I'm going to put up here and I'm going to have this be a homing projectile. And let's set this one to bright pink. So the bright pink ones are going to be homing projectiles. We'll take this cannon and we'll set these to be a straight shot. And then finally, and we can make those green. And then finally, let's do one more cannon. And this cannon is going to be a cannon that lobs. And we'll make these bright blue, for example. And we'll change our profile to be lob. So now when I play, we should have three separate towers, each doing their own thing. One is a homing projectile, one is a lob, and the other one is just a straight shot. All with customizable um, VFX colors that are determined by the blueprint that is spawning them in this case. So it's very easy for me to create a new weapon, attach this projectile to it, and then color it based on what that weapon is supposed to be shooting or whatever it's supposed to be doing. Uh, this is kind of wild trying to run around and get away from this. Now, a couple things. So far, we're doing pretty well. Getting things back under control and putting a bow on our tutorial. But there's, there's one thing that is worth kind of going into a little bit, and that is our targets. So in the case of a cannon, that is a straight shot, there are times where it might have a target. And if it does, we want the straight shot to follow the target. So if I simply connect, reconnect what we were using as our straight shot, what it's going to do, if you recall, is it gets a vector from the target actor uh, to, uh, from, from where the projectile spawns to the target actor and it uses that as its velocity profile multiplied by the initial speed etc and if you recall in our cannon what we were doing is we were getting the actor for our character now i'm going to change this slightly xbox the painting behind me oh the painting behind me uh let me finish this thought i'll tell you what that is all about um okay so we're going to change this a little bit to kind of kick it up a notch uh, some of the kicking uh, old cooking shows used to say what I want to do is I want a sphere I believe it's sphere overlap sphere overlap so let's do a sphere overlap actors and then what we're going to do is let's take this target and promote it to a variable and I'm doing this because what I want to do is I only want to add a target if it's in range. 
So let's get rid of this right now. And we're going to sphere overlap actors and we're going to use the cannon's position for our sphere. Uh, and let's see, let's get actor location. Get actor location. Um, nope. Location. Interesting. Get actor. Location. Here we go. I don't know why that was so entertaining. And we're going to set our radius to be 500 because let's just say the cannon is 500 smart. And the object types we're going to be looking for, we need to make one to feed this in. And we are going to be looking for pawns. And the class filter, we can set this as the third person shooters because we know that that's what it is. And then what we'll do is for each of these, Actually, we're not even going to do that. We're going to take our out actors and we're going to get the length because I'm not going to shoot. For future you, you have a choice. At this point, you can loop through your actors. For example, if you were creating a multi shot, you could loop through your actors and fire a projectile at each one. But we don't need to do that. OK, we just need one. So all I want to know is if this has length um actually let's do the four we'll do the four i changed my mind so let's do a four each and what we'll do here is we will set our target actor now this is very important to understand what this means is if there were more than one player in the game more than one third person bp what would happen is the very last one would always be the target that's okay for the purpose of this. You can use whatever logic you want. Now when we're done, what we're going to do is continue about our merry way of spawning our projectile. So let's just clean this up a little bit. And what we should see is the straight shots should no longer shoot directly at us unless we come within range. So let's go ahead and check. Okay. Oh, wait, I was wrong. Um, so on begin play, we set timer by event. We do sphere overlap actors of class and we set our target actor. But what we need to do is we need to clear our target actor when we start. So let's set it to nothing when we start. The reason being is when I spawned, You'll notice that what happened was I was too close to the straight shot turret and so it was shooting me right away. And then as I backed away, that turret's still in the scene. It still thinks I'm the target actor. And then what it does is it, it still keeps shooting at me even though I've walked away. So initially it's shooting right at me. If I walk away, you'll notice now it is a straight shot cannon. So this cannon will only target me directly if I come within range which is about 500 units, which is about, there it is, 500 units. Each of these squares is actually cool. This is why we use these environment textures. Each of these squares on the floor is uh, 100 units so that you can see we are one, two, three, four, about 500 units away. Okay, so as I step away, we have it. Now, you'll also notice as a result of this change, our homing projectiles are all messed up. So we're, we'll have to figure that out. But before we figure out the homing projectiles, let's take the same idea of the target and add it to the lobs, because this is kind of cool. West Ends, what's up? Two videos in one day. This looks like a continuation. Yes, it is. It is a continuation. This is the addendum where I have time. I'm not rushed now. I don't feel like I'm, I'm trying to give you all a fire hydrant and we can fix a couple of things that were going uh, sideways from before. Also, Weston's your previous comment in the last two streams ago, if you send me an email, I can talk about that. It's Kevin at livingfreestyle.com. Cool. Um, okay, so let's take a look at the lob. So here's what we want to do with the lob. It's very similar to the straight shot. If we have a valid target, all we want is we want the in position for our suggested projectile velocity to be the target. 
So let's do that. Um, and here's how we're going to do that. We are going to set our velocity vector. Okay, cool. So let's get our target. Actually, we already have our target. Let's see here. Missile trail, actor location. We have uh, the projectile shooter. There we go. Start position. Okay, cool. So if we get our target, and this will also give me a chance. I had mentioned I was going to show you a second way to deal with this, and I didn't get a chance to do that this morning in my excitement and rush and all that stuff. So here we go. Target actor, and we, we'll, we'll do it the same way we did before. Is valid. All right, and if it's valid, what we're going to do, by the way, when I drag this pin, okay, I wanna show you all something. In Unreal, if you don't know about this hotkey, if you go to try to connect to this pen, you have to go all the way up here and find it. This one's not too bad, it's pretty close. You can fit it on one screen. But a lot of times you're working and you don't know where this connected to. You just know you need to reconnect it somewhere else. Rather than going all the way over here and reconnecting it, what you can do is hold the control button and drag this down. And then you don't have to chase where the execute pen came from. So if the target is valid, we're going to do one thing. And if it's not valid, we're going to do what we were doing before. So this is step one. Let's rearrange this so it makes sense. So if our target is valid, what we're going to do instead of this is we're going to suggest, and I'm going to duplicate this just for now because I think it'll be easier to follow. Let's take our start position, plug it in, our is valid, and we will set our velocity vector here, and we'll plug this in. Okay, so we've got a couple things that we need to do with our lob. Hopefully, you've guessed this. All we're going to do is get the actor location here. Get the actor location, if I can spell. And with that, we'll plug that into our in position. We'll keep our gravity and everything like that. Very simple, that's it, that's all we have to do. Now, if we have a target, the lob is going to target the target and it's going to suggest a projectile path that should technically hit me if I'm not moving. So if the target is not valid, it'll just continue to shoot in circles around itself. So let's give that a shot. All right. So first off, let's back away from our green one. Now I have a target that does not seem to be hitting me, does it y'all? Okay, so let's make sure we are coming through this path. Are we actually hitting this? We're not. For some reason we're not, oh. We're not hitting it because our cannon is smart and it only activates within 500 units. There we go. So now you'll notice that it's trying to hit me with the lob. It's doing much better, but the problem is it's spinning a little bit. So let's just go ahead and um, let's increase our radius on our target detection to make that a little bit easier. Uh, actors in radius, let's go a thousand. And we could call that, we could make that a variable for a cannon so they have an aggro radius. But if I'm within a thousand, it's going to try to hit me. It does a pretty good job. So now what we've got is we have a straight shot, plus we have a straight shot with a target, and we have a lob, and we also now have a lob with a target. It does a pretty darn good job. If we get too far away from these, you'll notice that they return to their original behaviors. Straight shots and lobs. Okay? It's pretty cool. Now, um, you could argue, you could argue that the lob doesn't need to, the lobbing cannon doesn't need to turn, but we're, we're just gonna leave that, that's cool. Okay, now let's figure out what in the world is going on with our homing projectiles as a result of this change that we made. So first things first, our projectile spawns. It gets the target actor 
the root component and it feeds that in as our homing target. For some reason, let's take a look at this. And we have pink projectiles homing. I don't see anything in particular that would cause that to break. So let's see if we're hitting, let's do some quick debugging and see if we're hitting this. Uh, and actually I'm going to temporarily Uh, you know what, let's add the ability to just, I can either delete them, that's one thing I could do, but I don't want to delete them because there might be one more thing we want to do with them. Let's add the idea of being able to activate our cannon. So let's add an, a, a variable in here called is active. Is active, sure. Uh, actually, if you do B in front of your Boolean variables, by the way, you'll notice something here, B is active. What will happen is if I expose this on spawn, Unreal is smart enough to actually, when you look at it, it truncates all of the rest of that stuff. And you'll notice it takes the B off. So it just is active. The B is there because it tells me it's a Boolean. All right. And in this case, what I want to do is if it's active, get B is active. If it's not active, I just, I don't want to do any of the spawning. Okay, so let's just do not. Actually, no, no, if it's active, this is where we're gonna set the timer. So let's do that. Otherwise, we're not going to do it. This will give me uh, an easy way to debug this without having to debug three cannons at once. So none of them are active. This is great. So let's just activate our homing, our homing cannon. See if we can't figure out what's going on with that. So let's activate it and press play. All right, so we are hitting the homing projectile. That looks good. We have our acceleration. We're setting our initial speed here. If we mouse over, that's 2000, that looks good. Max speed is good. Gravity scale, zero, that's also good. And our homing target component is our target actor, which is the third person character, root component. Oh, I have an idea of what's happening. Okay, let me show you what's happening. By the way, homing is going to work now, sometimes. So right now you can see the homing's working. It's doing its best to get to me. It doesn't always do it because it's up on a pedestal and so it's hitting the ground. Okay, now if I get too far away, look what happens. Now all the projectiles are spawning in place. So here's one of the reasons why we're keeping this here. Okay, and actually we got a really cool clue from Unreal Engine. Access none trying to read property target actor, da -de da -de da homing target component. What happened was if, if you recall, um, when we set the cannons up to be smarter, they're only setting the target within a thousand units. So the problem with that is when we don't have a target and we come into this homing section, we this is bogus, this is nothing. So it has nothing to follow, so it just stays in place. So what we really wanna do is we wanna do one more check. If we come into homing and target actor is not valid, what should we do? What would you do? Um, so here's another great example. I'm not gonna go find that, I'm gonna control that. So if it's valid, we're going to do this. If it's not valid, I think it's reasonable for the homing projectile to just be a lob or a straight shot, whichever one you choose. So what you can do is you could just, there's a couple things. Let's just make this a lob, for example, if it's not, we already know that's not true, so we can just come straight in here. So now what should happen is if we're close enough, it's going to home and seek to get to us. If we get too far away, you'll notice that it just starts lobbing projectiles. So if we get within the aggro range, all of a sudden this thing is going to start shooting homing projectiles at us. Okay, 
So this is starting to kind of, we're starting to get our, our bow all tied up on this projectile, which is great. Now, one more thing that I wanted to kind of cover that I had mentioned uh, that we were going to do this morning was a different way to handle is valid. So this is one way to do it. You just drag off and get is valid. Another way to do this is called a validated get. So if I drag my target actor out here, doo -doo -doo, rather than dragging off and typing is valid, I can right click on this and convert to a validated get. When I do that, that replaces all of this. I don't have all these extra nodes. It's kind of just takes these two nodes and combines them into one. So what I can do is I can replace these two with this, which can help you clean up your blueprints a little bit. So we can take that and we can copy that and paste it up here. Same thing, validate again. We don't need this. Save some space. All right. So that was another piece that I had mentioned that we were uh, um, that I would cover this morning. That again, in the rush of excitement, didn't get a chance to go through that. So overall, I think things are looking pretty good. So let's see here. Yeah, I think we're great. So let's take these cannons and we will reactivate them. And we should have a dance of projectiles. So here we go. We have lob shots that are targeting us. We have targeted straight shots, depending on our detection radius. We have homing shots that do a great job. I guess I can't make that jump, which is great. So things are looking pretty good from the standpoint. I guess one more thing you could do is you could make the radius, the aggro radius for the cannon a variable. So this radius here, if we promote this to a variable, let's call this the aggro radius. We'll default it to a thousand. But what we could do is now that that's a thousand, if we didn't make that instance editable, expose on spawn, we compile, we save, we could take, for example, this lob cannon and we could set the aggro radius to 3000. And this thing is just going to constantly try to shoot us wherever we are. Right. It's lobbing those right at us. Now, I think part of the problem that it's not actually hitting us might be an initial velocity problem or that the cannon's rotating. But overall, uh, things look pretty good there. All right. Let me think if there's anything else that we need to cover. Niagara. We have all of our missile trips. Ah, okay. There was the other thing that I mentioned about Niagara this morning is I mentioned how Niagara was an update. Uh, so in Unreal, old Unreal, we used to have Cascade, and Ni in, in Unreal 5, we got Niagara. Niagara kind of facilitates a nonlinear workflow. What did I mean by that? So in today's tutorial, for the purpose of uh, ease, etc. We created a system that already had emitter attached. If we go back to our VFX folder, what we could do is you can create under VFX, you can just create an emitter and you can do a new emitter copy or create an empty emitter. So we'll just do a new emitter and let's just do confetti burst as an example. And this is going to be a Niagara emitter confetti uh, let's call this uh, impact confetti, for example. Okay. And then if we look at this, you can kind of see it, it kind of just like rains down slowly. We don't get a, we don't get a big, let's see here. Let's change our play and to be like, three seconds and play. Okay. So press play. It's kind of hard to see. Let's make this, uh, let's once again do the same thing we did earlier today underneath our initialized color. 
Let's make our confetti a nice bright red. Not 10,000, 10,000 is a lot. So when this spawns, we should be able to compile that. And what we can do, what I, the whole point of this is to show you in our impact. Now we have this emitter saved. We can add this to our existing emitter. So let's do this. Let's add an emitter and you can see we can choose whatever we want. In our case, um, we don't want engine provided. We want our emitter, which is Niagara emitter, not library only. And let's do, it's hidden from us right now. We just need to find it, show all. It's not finding it. That's interesting. Um, let's do this. Let's compile and browse to this asset. And then we'll just drag and drop. Let's see if we can drag and drop it in and force it. So I'm going to undock this. Where'd it go? Okay, there it is. Third person. Okay, cool. So dragging and dropping it worked. Um, would you like to save your changes? Yeah, let's save that. So now this emitter exists in this one as well. So we now have two emitters. So you can have more than one emitter. So you can see we have our original red and then we have our uh, our little dust flakes that are happening. And if we look at this in, in our game now, you can see the little white particles that are happening now in addition. So the, the whole idea of this is once you get a nice impact you like, you can reuse that. So if you go through the trouble of creating like cool swirling dust sparks, etc., you'll be able to reuse that. But again, the whole point of this 15 minute Niagara intro was to teach you the basics so that you knew how to make adjustments for stuff that you got from the marketplace or so you could create a quick prototype one to do something like this for your own uh, game efforts and things like that. So let's take a look at a couple um, questions before I do one more thing before we wrap up. All right. Do you think the projectiles from today's episode will work nicely in turn-based combat? Do you think it would look good for attacks to reach a target? Absolutely. I think it would totally work. Um, and then fire, ice, thunder, magic attack. Exactly. So if you don't already have a projectile, this is a very fast projectile that you can use, you can color, you can change. To, I mean, you could do your entire prototype with this. Now, if you're up for it, this is the last little piece that I want to cover before we get into the questions, including what's going on with the painting behind me. Um, uh, let me compile and save all this stuff. I wanted to show you a great example of this. Uh, for the, anybody who has been following the uh, platformer um, and 3D shooter and everything that we've been working on uh, as well, you'll remember that the original projectiles we had were um, were exactly the projectiles you were just looking at. Uh, hold on, these bat dudes are going. So what I did is I went through and I went ahead and rather than using those anymore, I thought it would be fun to get a new projectile. So I went and grabbed a projectile pack from the marketplace. These projectiles are pretty cool. And just like we went through in the tutorial today, all I have done with these projectiles is I have colored them using the exact same stuff that I taught you today. So let's take a look at that. So if we go down here to our, um, I'm going to look for, I believe it's going to be, let's look for dark energy, dark energy. Here's our projectile for dark energy. I want to change this for rather than straight shot with target, exact same stuff we set up today, rather than straight shot with target, I'm going to go homing. And then uh, you can see here, we have a poison trail, etc. And in here, I'm doing the exact same thing that I showed you, except I am setting the variables that I found in the Niagara system I grabbed from the marketplace. And in this particular case for the trail, and I'm going to show you this in a second, there's a bunch of variables ribbon fire, ribbon fire power, width, uh, splash colors, all these things that go into this projectile. So now if I go ahead and play, 
you'll notice that as I run towards my enemies, I now have homing projectiles that chase my enemies with a nice kind of blue color. But I can come in here and I can change these to be, for example, let's just change these down to a ribbon fire color of, let's try one. This probably changes it to orange because of the way this, this particular pack works. Yeah, so I have orange projectiles with blue tails now. It's pretty cool. So the whole idea here is now all my enemies can have uh, different colored uh, different colored projectiles that actually even look crazy nice without me losing development time building projectiles. Would I like to do that? Yes, but I'm trying to focus on delivering an experience for all of us to play, much like you're probably going to want to do with your own experiences. So um, as much as I have fun getting lost in the art of building VFX and everything, this is a, an amazing time saver. Uh, so let's uh, undo that. And then let's take a quick look at this projectile. So the projectile that this is spawning is class defaults, this trail poison. If I open trail poison, I'm going to show you how this particular artist worked. So when I grab this from the marketplace, you'll notice one of the first things I did is first off, let's take a look at this. This is a fairly straightforward effect. It has a missile ahead and a splat. And then I, what I, all I did was I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. Let's see if it was set up to be customizable. And so I opened our user variables and you can see here in our user variables, I have all of the stuff that I needed, projectile speed, ribbon colors, width, etc. And I can come in here and I can even test them out. If I change the splash color, for example, to pink, you'll notice that I have a, a pink splash color. So that is today's tutorial with uh, a little bit a little bit less of a, 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 a fire hydrant of information coming your way. I uh, went back and revisited a bunch of uh, things that, I basically went back and revisited a bunch of things that uh, kind of went a little bit fun during the, during the tutorial this morning. Uh, put a bow in it and then I wanted to show you all a practical example of some of those learnings and how you might use those in your own experiences and projects that you're working on uh, for your own players. So with that, Let's see if we can't get to a couple of questions for people who are here. Um, but as you can see, uh, Weston's absolutely, you can use those projectiles. You can use the simple one that I made, or if you want, you can spend a little bit of money in the marketplace and you can adapt those projectiles for your needs pretty easily. Uh, a lot of the VFX packs and everything, you know, they, they might seem like it's, it's a little bit of extra money, but the fact of the matter is whether it's 10 bucks, 50 bucks or hundred bucks, how long would it take you to build all of that stuff? And what is your time worth? So you gotta look at the opportunity cost, especially as it applies to how fast can you get your experience out there? So in this particular case, I like pretty art and uh, it would have taken me a long time to build all these uh, VFX. Maybe one day uh, I'll have a VFX artist or I'll go through and do them all myself. But for now, this is, this is great stand and stuff. So that's one question. Um, Certain you I look with StarCraft as I reference I'm thinking. Okay, great. Uh, the other question we had was more of a fun question. Uh, what's with the, the painting behind me? The painting behind me, let me see what it looks like for you guys. Yeah, it's kind of hard to see. It's actually a, it's actually a giant dragon. Um, and uh, it's a, there's an artist, Heather Edwards, that used to show, we used to have a booth at Comic-Con. Um, back when I was running, uh, I had my own company running animation rigs and stuff like that. And we would go to Comic-Con. And so we had, we were there for like five or six years and ha she had this painting up on her uh, booth. And I, I went by every year to look at it. And finally, I, uh, I bumped into another person who had done a print of it. And then uh, through, through a whole bunch of stuff and talking to, to Heather and stuff, uh, she was kind enough to let me buy the print. And uh, it's kind of a, it's a giant print um, that I put up and it was a little bit bigger than I realized. I had to get a moving band to move it. So, but it's a lot of fun and it's a, it's a fun background. All right, everybody. Uh, again, I went back and I looked at the video from this morning. It didn't seem like I was talking too fast or it was going too fast. It just felt like it when I was doing it. But like I said, I did want to go ahead and put a bow 
wrap it up. So this addendum is going to be available with within the live uh, within the live stream section of the site. I will go ahead and once everything's all settled and processed, I'll get links all connected up so so you all can see this. Uh, everybody who hopped in tonight, thanks for hopping in. I know this was an unscheduled stream, but it's still awesome to have you all here. Uh, and as always, uh, if you dig what we're doing, help spread the word, let people know what we're doing. Throw your comments down below. Let me, let me know what you all think. Also, uh, these I'm going to wrap this whole project file up. I'll throw it up on Patreon. Uh, if you all want to, for now, Patreon will be like how we vote on upcoming topics. But for now, just join Discord. People throw out in Discord what they want. I try to pay attention to, to chat and things like that. So I hope everybody has an awesome, awesome evening. And I will catch you all on the next live stream, which I will be posting that schedule Friday. Usually I post it by Friday night, but it should be tentatively next Wednesday uh, at the same normal time of 1130 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Cool. Have a good night, everybody. Take it easy.